Hey everybody, Michael J. Flores here. This is a short video featuring Kenneth Ellis's Bant Agro Control deck. Bant Agro Control is quite simply exactly the kind of deck that I like the most. If you take my meaning, this deck feels like a cross between Haterator and Critical Mass. One of the best cards in Kenneth's deck is Gaddock Teague. In this deck, which is a flexible offensive but also disruptive deck, Gaddock Teague saves off Wrath of God, prevents racing from the increasingly popular Cryptic Command, and generates incidental card advantage against some of the most popular cards in the format. The deck is also a rare example of a good troll ascetic deck. The underplayed Sword of Fire and Ice, or equipment in general, makes troll ascetic worth playing where it might not otherwise be. Plus, Sword is an absolute ace against fairies. In addition, Worship out of the sideboard is while not the kind of card you necessarily want to rely on, a powerful spoiler that can contribute to your overall win percentages and just steal games against underprepared opposition. The following game, despite being not very long, illustrates many of the Bant deck's unique angles and ways to win. We keep a reasonably slow, but also reasonably active hand, knowing that the opponent is Merfolk. You'll notice we have the one worship, as well as a troll ascetic in the opener. I don't think the opponent has many ways outside of Cryptic Command to beat this draw. That influences the decision to keep. He's got a Lord of Atlantis. They used to call him the Blue Iron Claw Works, but now he actually has a team. He's tapped so we can play Rock's Warmonk. This shouldn't be much of a race. Warmonk is better than Troll Ascetic initially, because he can't just attack into us and challenge a trade. One of the downsides of Troll Ascetic is that you're unlikely to put him in harm's way early without regeneration mana open. I'm fine playing a reactive game here because we have the click, plus we're actually winning right now. We pick a fight with Vendelian click at the end of his turn, which runs into mana leak. But no harm, no foul. We can pretty much guarantee that we're going to stick the Troll Ascetic next turn. So we stick the Troll Ascetic, but on the downside, here comes the first of about a million Sowers of Temptation. Jamie Wakefield used to say the worst thing about playing good green creatures was that blue decks would just steal them. Case in point. It's not likely that Worship is going to be an auto win against almost any deck in Extended. But dealing with Troll Ascetic is not easy for him, plus we have Bant Charm to deal with Cryptic Command if it comes down to that. These attacks are kind of strange from both sides. His are probably right because he has the Rock's War Monk, but I think that they're largely affected by the fact that there's Worship in play. Now this Vendillion click is supposed to be the ace. We're supposed to take out the Sower of Temptation, get back the Rock Swarm Monk, and dominate. But you can see his hand's quite good, other than the two spell centers, which are quite bad. And there's another Sower of Temptation. I wait until we can untap to use the Bant Charm on his Sower of Temptation. This is because he has got the Curse Catcher and also to cover with Spell Snare. And it looks like it's good enough. Once the Bant Charm sticks, between our now superior forces and the Worship, we get the concession after he ponders into what we can assume to be nothing. As an introduction, I'm sure you can see how the Bant Aggro Control deck is good at quite a few things. It can put up a lively offense, counter not with the best of them but well enough to protect key strategies, and even lock some games out. With the right pieces of surgical equipment, this deck in my opinion is one that you could consider for PTQ play. This has been Michael J. Flores, I hope you enjoyed it.